Good evening, and welcome to your lesson on 4.8, using the quadratic formula and this thing called the discriminant. So we have two objectives in this lesson today. We're going to be deriving the quadratic formula. Now, in another math class, you may have used the quadratic formula before, but today we're going to actually come up with it, all right? Because we're big boy and girl algebra students. I think we can handle it. Uh, and uh, also use the quadratic formula to help us solve quadratic equations. Our second objective is about using this thing called the discriminant to determine how many answers we, we could have and what kind of answers they are. So uh, the word discriminant sounds kind of like discriminate but in a good way. Here it helps us discriminate between the different kinds of answers that we can have. So, let's start with a warm-up exercise. It's uh, a completing the square exercise, and we're trying to see what the values of C are that are going to give us two real solutions, two imaginary solutions, and one real one. So, if I'm going to complete the square on this thing, go ahead and take this C over here to the right-hand side of the equation. So I have x squared minus 8x plus a blank equals negative c plus that same blank. Completing the square on the left hand side we know we take half our x's and get negative 4. Then we square them up and we get 16. If I added 16 to the left let's go ahead and add 16 to the right side. Alright so the left hand side factors as x squared no it doesn't. Erase x minus 4 squared equals, and, and I'm the type of guy who likes to have my positive number first, so I'm going to go ahead and write 16 minus c here. I just switch the order. Don't let that confuse you. Okay, so next step is go ahead and take the square root of both sides of this. Take the square root, and I have x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 16 minus c. Here's a question. Can you go ahead and simplify this as the square root of 16 minus the square root of c? Think about it for a second. No, you can't. All right, good. Good answer. All right, and then finally, x equals subtract that 4 over negative 4 plus or minus square root of 16 minus c. All right, maybe I'll put a box around that. Okay, now where does that leave us? How are we going to use that to figure out how many answers we're going to have and what kind they are, two real ones, two imaginary ones, or whatever. And it all depends on this square root, the square root of 16 minus c. Because if my square root is a positive number, I'm going to take the square root and I'm going to have two answers, a positive and a negative. If that square root is zero, I'm only going to get one answer zero. And if my square root is negative, I'm going to get two answers again, and they're going to be imaginary. So it looks like this. It's just the radicand there. It's just the 16 minus c. So if 16 minus c is positive, and I write that as greater than zero, go ahead and add this over. 16 is greater than c. I don't like it in that direction. I'm going to switch this around. C less than 16. As long as C is less than 16, we get two real answers. All right? How about if 16 minus C is equal to 0? Add that C over. Oh, yeah. Again, got to flip that around. If C is exactly equal to 16, how many answers are we going to get? We're going to get just one. We're going to get one real one because we're taking the square root of zero, which is just zero. And your answer would just be four because all of this square root business over here would just disappear. Lastly, I've got 16 minus c being less than zero. If that square root was negative, the radicand, add that c over, and yeah, switch it around. C is, whoops, 
greater than 16. Where did my greater than symbol go? C is greater than 16. What kind of answers are we going to get? Well, that's going to make this square root. Just think about it. If I stick in, say, 20, that makes it negative 4. Now I've got a negative number underneath that square root. And now I'm getting two imaginaries. I'm going to write that as that blackboard C as in complex numbers. So this thing that we're looking at, the thing underneath the square root, is an example of a determinant. I'll write it right up here. D. No, it isn't. It's an example of... Example of... I need my eraser. There we go. A discriminant. Discriminant. It's like it's a kind of ant. It discriminates. It discriminates between the different kinds of answers and how many answers we get. Okay. So, objective one. You're going to be able to derive and use the quadratic formula to solve any quadratic equation. So you may remember the quadratic formula, and you may remember it to a little song, and we'll talk about that in a little bit too. So in the picture, in the picture, of course, that's a jack-in-the-box. And the song that usually plays in the jack-in-the-box is Pop Goes the Weasel. And usually that's the song that people learn the quadratic formula to. So maybe we'll hear that, not in this video, but in somebody else's video. Okay. So, let's uh, review completing the square again, because why not? And uh, I'm going to complete the square on this sucker. So whenever I complete the square on this quadratic equation, i got two options. Maybe I can divide everything by 3, or maybe I can factor out the 3. Let's just go ahead and divide everything by 3 this time. Divide by 3. I'm going to have x squared plus 8 thirds x minus 5 thirds. That is a terrible looking 3. 5 thirds equals 0. Complete the square by getting this thing over here. x squared plus 8 thirds x plus a blank equals 5 thirds plus a blank. All right, you ready for this? It's going to be tough. I need to take half of this number. So 8 thirds times a half. That 2 will cancel with that 8, giving me 4 thirds. All right. So 4 thirds, square that number, and I get 16 ninths. So add 16 ninths over here to this side. 16 ninths. All right, so far, wonderful. On the left-hand side, I've got x plus, that's the middle term there, 4 thirds, squared, is equal to, now I need a common denominator over here. Common denominator, of course, is going to be 9. So I need to multiply top and bottom by 3. So there's a 9 there, there's a 15 there. 15 plus 16 is 31 over 9. Go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of both sides. X plus 4 thirds is equal to plus or minus. Just break up these two square roots. Square root of 31 up top, it's prime number. It's not going to simplify. And the square root of 9 is not 9. How about 3? And then finally, go ahead and subtract that 4 thirds over here. So X is equal to negative 4 thirds plus or minus square root 31 over 3. Or we can write that, since they both have a common denominator, negative 4 plus or minus square root 31 all over 3. So, kind of tedious, right? Kind of tedious with all those fractions in there? Well, maybe if we could come up with some sort of formula we wouldn't have to deal with all those fractions. We just put the numbers in the formula and be done with it. And there is such a thing as called the quadratic formula. Now, rather than me just give it to you, why don't I try to make you come up with it yourself? So, that's what you're going to do in this little investigation. You're going to try on your own to come up with a quadratic formula. Now, somebody's done this a long, long time ago, so I think it's something that you're capable of doing. What you have to try to do is complete the square on ax squared plus bx 
plus c equals zero. You complete the square just like you would ordinarily complete the square with something that had numbers in it. It's just now you have some variables a, b, and c. So give it a try and then check us out in the next video. Did I say next video? I meant go ahead and hit pause. All right. So let's go ahead and try this together. Rather than me just show you what the answer, let me go through that process. So, completing the square, obviously I've got to get the C over here. Maybe I should, just like the, the previous example, maybe I should just go ahead and divide everything by A. Divide by A. So I'm going to start writing over here on the far left hand side. So I have, uh, if I divide this, this one by A, I, the A's cancel out and I just have X squared. Divide this by A, I get B over A, X. I'm going to go ahead and put my plus my blank because I'm going to subtract this C over here. Make this, of course this would be C over A also. Negative C over A. Alright, so complete the square on the left hand, oh, plus blank. There we go, there we go. Uh, complete the square by taking half of this thing. So half of B over A, that's times a half. Top times top, bottom times bottom. It's just B over 2A. Square that thing, square the top, square the bottom. See if you follow this. B squared over 4, so I squared the 2, A squared. All right. So I add that to the other side as well. So B squared over 4A squared. So over here on the left hand side we've got factor in it as a binomial x plus b hey b over 2a that's that middle term there half of the middle term anyway squared equals just like I said before I'm the type of guy who likes to switch the order here so I'm gonna make this b squared over 4a squared minus now I'm gonna have to combine these things so why don't I go ahead and get a common denominator here so I need it to be, well this one has a factor of a and this one has 4a squared so it needs another a and it needs a 4 so I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this thing by 4a times 4a and that's going to give me 4ac on top and 4a squared on the bottom go ahead and uh, combine those I'm going to b squared minus 4ac. Wait a minute, that sounds familiar. Uh, whatever. Uh, over 4a squared. Alright. Take square root of both sides. Take square root over here. Take square root over here. And I have x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus big old square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now can't I break that up? Answer is yes sir. So square root of b squared minus 4ac up top and on the bottom take the square root of that that's just 2a. Man that is looking familiar. Alright last thing just subtract this right over to the other side. Subtract that thing over there. I get x is equal to, it'll be negative b over a, 2a, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Maybe I like to have that combined. Maybe I just, I have a common denominator, negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And there you have it. That's how you come up with a quadratic formula, which you'll see nice and neatly typed on this slide. So let a, b, and c be real numbers with a not equal to zero. a squared plus b squared, a squared, a x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. These are the answers. x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Alright, see you in the next video.